When you're first starting out, buying PCs or buying a computer or a laptop or a Mac or whatever you are, it can be daunting. When I first built my own PC, I had $750 to do it and I was able to do it. It was a very, very low end PC that did okay for the most part. Today, I actually went to Micro Center, which is my local store, and I decided to see if I could build a thousand dollar PC for video editing and light gaming. I got this inspiration from a guy on YouTube called Tech Notice. He does PC creator stuff. But today, this is just every part that you need for the PC and why. When I was first starting is that people just told me what parts to get, but not why to get them and what the importance of them are. Basically, I asked some friends of mine, what is your budget for a PC setup? And they said that their budget with a monitor and peripherals and stuff was about 13 to $1,500. And we actually came in under that $1,300 mark. Let me put a disclaimer though. I did shop at Micro Center and they had a bundle deal on a CPU, motherboard, and RAM. The prices for the 7000 series were dropped a lot. I think this CPU normally retails for $259.99 or something like that. I got it with the bundle for $143 plus tax. Let me just say, if you don't have a local micro center near you, I'm going to put an alternate CPU and motherboard and RAM combo in the description below because you'll need to go with Ryzen 5000 series, which is not a bad choice. I actually love the Ryzen 5000 series. It's just a previous generation, and this is the new generation, which will be supported for longer. This is one reason why I went 7000 series, because I know the new 9000 series are coming out. I wanted to go ahead and build a PC, and Micro Center just had some great deals. So if you're at a Micro Center, if you're near Micro Center, if there is a way to go to a Micro Center, even if it's a three hour drive, highly recommend it because I was able to get all of this for $1,000. I will put all of the links in the, to the parts in the description box below. There are many ways to do it and I've done so much research and I just wanna help young creators who don't have a lot of money build a great PC. So all of this plus the monitor, plus peripherals you can get for under $1,400, maybe even under $1,300, depending on where you buy everything from. I actually paid for all of this stuff with my own money. I'd have no help whatsoever. So if you wanna support me and this channel and thank me for doing this work and putting together this PC, if you do decide to buy any parts from this, I really would appreciate if you could use the affiliate links in the description below. You don't have to pay any more. It just gives me a small percentage kickback, which just helps me with the cost of this PC. We're gonna quickly run through the parts just so that you understand what it is, and then we'll get into a build time-lapse. So the CPU that we're using is the AMD 7700X, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU. It's their new Raphael chip on their new AM5 platform, and it's a awesome CPU. Now, the reason that I went with this CPU and not Intel is because of the GPU, and we'll get to it later, but AMD, I've noticed as someone who ran AMD and loves AMD, they do better with raw performance, like raw codecs, all i codecs if you look at all of the benchmarks and all of the tech notice videos on breaking down cpus versus cpus these are able to handle higher resolution footage and it's going to be really awesome gonna give you great performance and just a better high resolution editing cpu we're pairing that today with the gigabyte 650m plus Wi-Fi. Now, I really wanted to get a motherboard that supported Wi-Fi 6 because I think that that's just a necessary thing in today's day and age. I really wanted a USB-C port on the back. I think it's a 10 gig USB-C port just because we're trying to compete here at the price point of a Mac mini. 
and I want to have some of the connectivity that a Mac mini does have. Plus it has 2.5 gig LAN, so if you're plugged into a ethernet port, you're gonna get faster than normal. So this is gonna be an overall really good board. So there's some really nice things about this board, and it's a micro ATX board that we're gonna be using because we're building a minier PC. For the RAM, we're gonna be going with 32 gigs of DDR5. This is white RGB T-Force Delta, 5600 megahertz speed. Now, technically you want 6000 speed, but I was in a budget and this was one of the only real budget RAM kits that I could go with and I thought it would be okay, you can see. So, I don't really care for the RGB. This is gonna be a white PC. It's gonna look a little pretty. I'm not mad about the RGB, but it's not worth spending extra on. 32 gig kit, if you can afford a 64 gig kit, I would highly recommend 64 gigs, especially if you're using Premiere Pro or After Effects or Lightroom. Those programs are RAM hungry. Any Adobe program is honestly RAM hungry. DaVinci is not as RAM hungry, but get yourself 64 gigs if you can afford it. If it, I think it's only like eight 80 bucks more. If you're doing light gaming and some, you know, basic editing or even some more heavier editing, this should be fine. You just might have to render some things out every so often, which is not a terrible thing. We've got a 500 gig SSD M.2 from Crucial. It's their P3. It's pretty fast drive. I think it's Gen 4. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can see up here up to 3,500 megabytes read and write speed. 500 gigs is a little low if you're building a PC. If you can fit it into your budget, I would go with a one terabyte. I find that if you're gonna be putting cache files on there, downloading programs, games, things, it's gonna get filled up pretty quickly. Nice little 500 gig SSD for your boot drive. Nothing crazy, it was like 39.99, so really good sale. For fans, we got these knockoff Lee and Lee Uni fans. If you're not familiar with PC building, Lee and Lee Uni fans are fans that kind of connect together and daisy chain and then ha run into a hub for RGB. I have multiple in my PC and I love them, but they are $99 for a pack of three, whereas these are $45 for a pack of three. These fans are definitely a more budget friendly option if you want RGB. I only got these because I'm trying to make the build look aesthetic pleasing as well so you don't need to do this and you can actually find way cheaper fans if you don't care about the RGB or the way the thing looks necessarily I will link those as well in the description and I'll link these in case you do want to get these if you're trying to go for aesthetics next up is our CPU cooler we are going air cooled today I normally go liquid cool we've got this peerless assassin 120 in white and what's awesome is that it it's compatible for AM5 and Intel, and it's a dual 120 fit millimeter fan in white. I'm stoked to try this out. It's gotten some great reviews on Amazon from one of my favorite YouTubers, Gamers Nexus. And so I'm interested to try it out and it should easily fit in the case we have. And then the last thing is our GPU. This is the reason why I went with AMD. So Intel's CPUs and iGPUs, they encode and decode H.265 footage, which is on most mirrorless cameras. We're actually shooting H.265 on the S52X. We went with the Intel Arc A770. And the reason that we're going with this is because this has H.265 decoders. So basically, what's awesome about this is if you shoot with the Canon R5, the Sony A7S III, the FX30, FX3, any really small mirror mirrorless camera, they usually shoot in what's called H.265 or HVEC. Sometimes they shoot in 10-bit 422, which is one of the most impossible codecs to work with. Intel and Apple have come up with ways to decode them. I have my 14700K has the iGPU, which decodes it natively. This is a great budget range GPU. I think it's like 300 bucks and it has those decoders. It's not super powerful on the GPU side. We'll get into this in a whole other video, kind of testing all of the you know, power of this GPU specifically. We're gonna try and push this through its paces, unlike most tech YouTubers out there. So anyway, this is a really good one. And what's awesome again, is that it has those decoders decoder so um, it should be able to decode the H.265 footage pretty easily and that's again why we went with the 7700X because I knew that this was better CPU for like raw 
for ProRes, for all I, for any of those kinds of codecs, and this GPU is better for compressed codecs. So I thought it would be a really good pairing to show, and again, it fits in that $1,000 build. So these are the parts that we're going with. The power supply over here is just a white 750 watt bronze. I like to go fully modular gold, but the case that we're doing is a white case and it's a smaller form factor build. So I wanted to go with a white one so I didn't have to get cable sleeved extensions. These are the parts that we're building. And now we're gonna go ahead and get into the uh, time lapse. So now that we're done building this, you can see it right here. The reason that I put this build together is so that it can rival the base model M2 Mac Mini Pro. I like the Mac Mini Pros. I like that they're small, compact, and they have a lot of connectivity. And so I kind of wanted to mimic something like that. Now I could have gone with a very small build and even smaller build than this, but I did not feel like I wanted to build in something that small. The reason that I'm, build I'm talking about this is Macs lock you in. When you buy a Mac, you're locked into the specs that you buy, to the memory that you buy, to the storage that you buy, you're locked in. With this, you're not. If you decide that this CPU later on down the line is just not cutting it, you can swap it out for the 12 core or the 16 core. If you're starting to do more raw codec and you need more GPU, so you're not needing that H.265 decoder, you can swap that GPU out. The thing about PCs is that you can customize them and upgrade them as you go. And that to me is one of the most important things when it comes to building or buying a computer is being able to future proof yourself, you know, being able to upgrade in the future. So that's why I like PCs. The next video, I don't know when that will be coming out, but the next video will be talking about the performance of this computer compared to my $2,500 computer to the M2 Pro laptop that I have, which is a 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU. And this will be doing Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So you'll get both programs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple projects that I've actually worked on in each program and I will be running tests on this and those two other systems. So that way you can kind of get an idea of where this sits in comparison to those two other systems. I will also be doing a you know footage playback on a 4K timeline to see what footage it can play back, like where, where does it get bottlenecked and maybe what footage does it work best with. I really wanna focus on the actual project side of things. I feel like YouTubers, benchmarkers, all they do is just benchmark but they don't actually give you what it's like to work on a project in real world. Like take a project that they've worked on and then tr test it out on these computers. Can, and number one, can it play it back? Number two, how fast the export speeds. Number three, if it can play it back, what timeline resolution are you on? Are you on full, half, quarter, what? The reality of things is we use these computers every day to actually edit our projects, to actually work on our projects. And so how does this actually handle that day-to-day -day workflow? I will also be coming out with a video on using this for a month. I'm actually filming this talking head uh, a bit late and I've been using this computer and I can tell you I'm incredibly surprised with the power that it has for being a thousand dollar pc so i'll actually be talking about what it's like to edit the on this day on a day-to-day -day basis i've got a couple projects next week that i'm going to be starting to shoot and edit so that's kind of those are the two last projects i'm going to edit on this system specifically and we'll talk about all of those in another video that will be the third and final video of this video series so the last thing i want to say is thank you for taking your time to watch this. If you are interested in any of the parts 
I personally have not had any sponsors. I've paid for all of these parts myself. And so if you want to support this channel and help me be able to create, still make things like this, I will put affiliate links in the description below with parts to this computer, a Ryzen 5000 series computer and an Intel PC. So if you buy any of those parts, please do use the affiliate links in the description below. They really help me out and allow me to create more videos like this. I just, I hope this video helped. I hope this video shows you that you can really build a budget PC that still has power if you do the research and you put the time into making sure that you check all of the boxes that you need. So with that, I hope you have a great day and you stay safe.